Former Health Secretary that I spoke of is Matt Hancock. He joins me live, Conservative MP, of course, for West Suffolk. Thanks for coming on. I'll, I'll put to you that question I put to David. Yeah. If these are the right things to be doing, which I presume you think they are, why didn't you do them? Yeah, well, we made progress on a whole series of these things, like the pension rules, for instance, which used to also affect hospital doctors, and uh, fixing the pension rules to stop the incentive to go part-time for GPs is like the last piece of that uh, reform. And I warmly welcome it, and I think it's been very broadly welcomed. Um, the, the it's so perverse, though, isn't it? Isn't it utterly yeah. crazy that that was in the system for so long? Yeah, totally. And, but why and is it so hard to change? Because it's expensive, and so that's the reason. You know, and it, it's all right. It, you know, I'm a, I'm as a former health secretary, I'm part of the band of people who. Uh, you know, you bl- you complain about the treasury, but you know they th- th- these things have to be paid for, and that's the treasury's so job. So you're you're saying that that perverse incentive that saw doctors and GPs leave the profession because well, they'd reached was was allowed because the treasury said we're not going to pay to change this. Well, it's a, it's it's a much more complicated, involved, and but dare I say it, boring story as to why it ended I'm up. I'm here like for this. it. So the reason was that the treasury changed the overall rules about pensions. Uh, to make them less generous for very well-off people. And GPs and other doctors are in the top bracket of pay. But because of the way that the NHS pension scheme worked, it brought in this perverse um, uh, incentive. I managed to persuade them to change it for hospital doctors, but GPs' pensions are different altogether. Um, And that was in the run-up to the 2019 election. We got that sorted, but then we needed to return to the GP issue and then the pandemic struck. So that's the sort of boring reason why it's got to be sorted now. But I'm very, very glad that Theresa has sorted it um, because the, the essentially... When you take into account pensions, they ended up getting paid uh, nothing for more for mm-hmm. for more than a certain number of hours per week, and so that led to a lot of GPs going part time. The only thing I, I thought that that uh, interview was excellent. The uh, the thing that I would pick up on because I know you like a good debate here on LBC is in terms of that the the staffing. Um, the, there are record numbers of new doctors. There's record numbers of new GPs coming onto the system. Well, the critical thing is to stop them leaving. Because if, if you've got the leaky bucket, in, to extend the analogy, um, sure, you can pour more water into the top, and uh, we are doing, but you've got to stop the leak at the bottom. And so um, the numbers of people in medical schools is at record levels. Last year it was Why even... Why is there a cap? Uh, well, because it's really expensive. And the thing I really disagree with is this idea that you can't hire people to come from overseas to work in the NHS. The NHS couldn't operate without people who've who've come from overseas to work in it. It is a great global magnet for talent and people want to come and work in the NHS because it's one of the best health systems in the world. So let's not do it down and say, you know, we can only have homegrown. We need both homegrown and international talent. to put a cap on the number of people. There are people begging to do nurse. Do you think that scrapping the bursary was a mistake to encourage people into it? Well, I put the bursary in place, so you can imagine what I uh, think of that. So why was it? I mean, but I this brought is, the. This, I brought. Hold on, I brought the bursary in. But this is twelve years now of a Conservative government that have that have mixed no, it's and not. matched policies no, it's not. I brought, in different hold, ways I, to try and to try and make this better. It's a problem that has been uh, created by and then is trying to be alleviated by the, arguably the same people. What a load of rubbish! The, firstly, I brought in the bursary for uh, nursing students, and secondly, there's record numbers of new nurses. Remember the 50,000 more nurses commitment at the last election that I put through, centrepiece of our manifesto? It is being delivered. We're on track to deliver it. There's record... Hold on. There's record numbers of new doctors coming through the system. There's record number of doctors in the NHS. And the critical thing is to make sure through this these changes they're not leaving. But also... How's the 40 also, new it's, hospitals going? Also, it's not... Ju- I'll come on to that. It's not just about the number of people. It's about how effective the system is. And that's one of the things that the health secretary is picking up on and driving, you know, driving forward reforms. For instance, being able to go to the pharmacist for a minor ailment, you know, that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We do far less of that in this country than in other countries. Um, And the reform, I kicked off the reforms to that contract. That's being brought in. I think it's excellent because you've got to think about how you use your resources as well as how many resources you've got. The 40 new hospitals thing Mm. was just a lie, wasn't it? No. Why not? Because it was a commitment over this decade, and we're in 2022, and the money was there for the early projects, 
And obviously, I think we should fulfil that commitment. But it was always so a commitment you, over a decade. You are absolutely certain that 40 new hospitals yes. means 40 additional hospitals to the number that already exists? No. Right, so in what way it's are not they new 40... hospitals? Oh, my God, this is like a rerun of the 2019 general election campaign. But it told... matters to people, Matt, Yes, because, that's because right, people, and exactly. people were it... under the impression that it meant 40 additional hospitals. And no. what they actually are told... No, they weren't. Is... No, they weren't. They're... Actually, they weren't because we were really clear about the language. And I had this out many times during that election campaign, and it doesn't matter... If you or Piers Morgan gets your language wrong, what matters is what politicians say the commitments they make. We made two major commitments. 50,000 more nurses, mm -hmm. that is additional yep. nurses, yep. over and above. Because, of course, lots of nurses retire each year. Absolutely. You need to have 50,000 more coming in than go out. 40 new hospitals, that includes replacement hospitals. Come with me to West Suffolk. Come with me to Bury St Edmunds. And there you will find a hospital that is literally falling down. It needs an urgent replacement. It's getting one. It's in the 40 hospitals programme. They've bought the land next door to the hospital. They've got the architect's plans. They're going to build a new hospital. Fantastic. It is a replacement of the existing West Suffolk Hospital that was put up 40 years ago, spent, supposed to last uh, you know, this length of time, actually supposed to be, have been replaced a bit ago, is now ready for replacement. Is that is a new hospital. Is the refurbishment of an A&E ward inside a hospital a new hospital? No. So why, why is there an attempt to try and spin it as a new hospital? Where? There have been attempts made by all sorts of people. I've had, I've had no, numerous ministers come on attempt to suggest, and it even it's in the language on the, uh, the health um, department's website, about these new areas of hospitals that new are being hospital. refurbished, quite rightly. They're being, but they're not new no, there's, hospitals. There's a ho there is absolutely a massive refurbishment programme as well. So, for instance, one of the things I did was said that all of the A&Es in the country are too small and they need to be extended. And we extended them during COVID. We extended over 120 A&Es during COVID. They're not new hospitals. They are either refurbishments or extensions. The 40 new hospitals, sometimes they are replacement hospitals for falling down old hospitals, but they're important too. They are not, so it isn't 40 more hospitals, it's 40 new hospitals and 50,000 more nurses. Final and question. So the, the, the words matter. Final question. How are GPs going to be punished or incentivized further to see people inside two weeks? What would what would you encourage the health secretary to do for to GP surgeries who do not see patients inside two weeks, as she said? Well, it's about how you structure the GP contract, because GPs are contractors into the NHS. They're not generally direct employees. And within that contract, you can make it clear uh, the the requirements and you can put in place penalties. It's absolutely standard practice within the within the GP. So when Therese Coffey said this morning, if there's a league table published, patients yeah. can decide for themselves. Yeah. If it's not a good one, they can go elsewhere and that will change the funding for the GP That's surgery right. that loses the patient. So yeah. they will be in effect financially penalised, but through the patient leaving if they don't do it well enough within two weeks. Yeah, that sort that sort of thing. So I, I haven't uh, it's, it's eminently doable through the GP contract and the way that that contract works. And what matters is that the contract needs to be there to work for for GPs, of course, to make sure that they are incentivised to uh, to do their job. But anyway, for most v v GPs, it's a vocation, uh, but also critically for patients. And that's what the new health secretary is very focused on. Good to speak to you. Matt Hancock, former health secretary of state for health and social care, conservative MP for West Suffolk. We'll come